All right. Oh, crap. We're, we're broadcasting. All right, guys. We'd like to welcome you back to the Mad Maker Show. Um, my name is Eloy. I'm one of the hosts. And I just want to mention a couple of things before uh, we start start. The show, I know a lot of you guys visit us. And you're always here with us uh, sharing uh, in our adventures. But there's a lot of folks that might, you know, after the fact, come across the uh, the videos and want to investigate and explore. So uh, I want to mention Mad Maker Show. It's about interviewing people that create things um, in their home workshops, in shop, just all sorts of things in their garage, in their rooms, um, and from all sorts of materials. There's an extraordinary amount of creativity occurring out there. And now we have this great advantage of video plus that tradition of people doing it themselves and, and creating things from nothing uh, merging and we see this on on social media from Instagram uh, YouTube on Facebook and and everywhere else so we want to grab those people uh, when we can and interview them and see what we can draw um, you know enlightenment information uh, creativity inspiration from them so just to give you a quick, I'm going to share the screen and show you a couple of the cover arts that we've done uh, for each show. And I'm presenting to everyone here. Is that showing up, guys? Full screen? Can you tell? Yeah. All right. So one of, actually, our first guest was Adam McMillan. That's the man crafting cover. I like it because uh, it's like Old West style. It looks like it should be in a spaghetti western. I always really dug this uh, this cover. Our second show was with Bobby Duke. He's facing away from the the picture, but nice and psychedelic. Can I uh, can I just quickly add with the Bobby Duke one? His channel exploded right after being on this show. Yes, it had everything to do with the Mad Maker show. Bobby Duke yeah. came on, and all of a sudden, you too can be. Um, you too can have a million subscribers plus. That's right. You can make a show. Right. He came on the Mad Maker show. All of a sudden, I mean, people are 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 screaming like the Beatles. Um, this is the previous episode with Ray from Ray Makes. Really dig that dude. And this is Keith Decent. And that's actually his drawing, painting in the back. That's awesome. Here's Bales. Here's you. Here's me. Here's Arju. Very um, warrior, Viking. Here's Jack Bench. Amanda Duke. Here we have Ashley from Chip Bills. And by the way, her logo is green, and I wanted to do this. It reminded her logo. I never told her. Her, her, her logo reminds me with the green and, and all that of the uh, Beach Boys album, Pet Sounds, which is an iconic album. And so I said, oh, I'm going to do this retro with her logo like that and a very, like, 60s, 70s retro image. And here we have Zerker, the madman himself, DJ Geiler, Socomo. Yeah, cacao. I Jessup. Herb Lichtenberg. He's the, the dude over. Doesn't that look like Buck Rogers space? Kind of Eddie the Eagle. Here we have Wartooth, Sarah. And this this one here, Heath Knuckles, the way it, so for Heath, I wanted to do something really trippy. And I, I went really trippy. So it's kind of like a retro like eight millimeter film with some sort of like vintage psychedelic situation going on and i might have overdone it but i totally dig this cover it's insane and he does something with his eyes and it's just you know i thought of just a trip a total trip here we have elm city vintage he's over here watching himself drive by because we're all about that madness right that's the idea that people that create here's shogun jimmy and another psychedelic uh scenario here's andy Ber berkey he went pop in this situation um dan the maker man i wanted to totally destroy the uh blue 
and and white and just go like like some sort of school film that you'd see you know at first period um so that's that here's doc jared here we have jake thompson rebecca de groot make it so here we have james king from king's fine woodworking here we have five by 30 julian mark Lindsay, brett brett did not like this cover initially said dude you picked the most boring cover and i said no dude look you're in front of an old house it's got all these different cool things there's flower and you're sitting there lethargic that's a that's a freaking awesome i was about to, that's an awesome um cover here's al's hack shack wolverine bad to the bone carl jacobson head between stuck centers. in uh, what's that between centers <laughs> between centers here's charles deering he didn't he didn't want this cover either he was like no dude and i said dude that's the best everybody agreed and he, he didn't agree here's hobby's wood shop Spider Mike. Here we got Temple Boy. Waylight Creation. Matt. This is like perfect fitting for Matt. Awesome wood things. It really, really, really is. The 80s called. They're sending us Matt Haas. <coughs> so that's that. I just wanted to share the fact that we um, stop sharing. That we've interviewed a bunch of people and it's just incredible and we add art to it there's other things coming down the the, the pipes as well um so that's my part jp uh yeah just uh just quickly as always i'm sitting here out of my man crafting mug um just a quick thanks uh once again to doc for filling in for us um my social media uh my youtube is jp woodwork my twitter and instagram is jp underscore woodwork my website is jp-woodwork.com i'm one sixth of my makers international podcast uh website is makers international podcast.com both websites are sponsored by steve at high media website is high media.com uh i made this today uh there'll be a video coming out on that soon uh, it's got that in it. Um, I was given a lot of that by the guys at Milliput, so thanks to you guys. Um, you're not a real woodworker unless you've got one of them, Eloy. And you're muted. It, does it have to be uh, the box cutter, or could it be a knife? No, it could be anyone. Okay. Um, and also, you're not a real woodworker unless you've got one of them. Um, you know what? I've got a stamp. No, it's got to be a brand. I've got a stamp. But it's got to be a Tony Relu one. <laughs> oh, look, it says made by Relu there. I'm sure it does. <laughs> <laughs> uh, apart from that, that's it. See, I had the, I, when you said that, because prior to the show, guys, we were sitting around talking and, and he was going to burn me. But he was kind, so he gave me. So JP was actually being uh, kind, so he, he did the, the the knife. But I I said, oh crap, I'm not gonna let him get away with it. And I found this. Um, so, but it doesn't count, right? Nope. Yeah, I knew it wouldn't. All right, so I want to welcome owner operator of Hillview Wood and Metal, Tony Rouleau. What's going on, dude? Hi guys, uh, thanks for having me. Dude, it's it's. Um, I appreciate you coming on. I I was shocked when you because we had a talk prior and and I, I said, dude, is this gonna be your first? You know, have you have you done a show before? And and you said, oh no, I've done a few and this and that. Little did I know you 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 did not mention that um you, you have you have like five weeks in a row of like shows. You, you've been doing cross country. You're like on on a book tour or something. <coughs> yeah, I'm on the Oprah book tour and. My agent told me I had to do yours, and then I'm rolling on to, I don't know what, seven cities and six nights. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> so um, so I, we want to start a little bit with, can you give us a, a little bit of your past? Um, tell us where you're at, uh, where you've been growing up, 
just a little bit of that so we have so we have a, a, a better <clears throat> idea. I'm born and raised in upstate New York, uh, true upstate New York, not just above the city. Uh, I'm about an hour north of Albany, right in the middle of the state, right on the Vermont border in a small town called Greenwich. We call it Greenwich, Jamie, not Greenwich. <laughs> um, yeah, we call it Greenwich. <laughs> it's Connecticut people do too. But uh, I, that's, I grew up there. Uh, my father worked at a hardware store. My mom was kind of a stay-at-home mom. And my closest grandparents had a dairy farm, which was less than a quarter mile down the road. So I had a lot of experience with um, a lot of hands-on stuff, uh, watching my grandfather just, just run the farm. And uh, I was about 12 or 13, and Greenwich has a very good, and they still do have a very good shop program. And I got turned on to woodworking, and my father got me a scroll saw when I was 12 or 13 and it just kind of took off from there and I've been woodworking ever since <clears throat> out of school I went to a trade school to become a machinist that's what I do full-time is uh, machining primarily now is three and five axis CNC machining but uh, I've been a machinist for about 20 years now very cool dude um, by the way thank you OJ OJ just crossed the, the 400 subscriber mark. Um, if you could link him, you probably did uh, just now. So go check out OJ. Hey, congrats. What's that? Already done. Awesome, dude. Awesome. So thank you, dude. Appreciate that. <coughs> um, so, Tony, do you have brothers, sisters? I have one sister. She's three or four years younger than me. How? Um, go, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. No, I, no, that was it. How how is it growing up where where you grew up? You know, as far as um, so have you ever lived in a big city? Never. <clears throat> no, no. Uh, it's all been rural cow country for me. Uh, hay fields, and I mean, we'll we'll go and visit the city, but it's uh, I like the quietness of this the country. I like to go to the city and visit, but I don't know if I could survive in that atmosphere, at least the way I am. Yeah, um, I've I've my my similar. Even though I am in the big city, <clears throat> you know, uh, I kind of my my heart is actually not with. It's too much, right? There's too much uh, chatter going on. Now, I'm asking you these questions for the folks out there that are watching this and later in syndication. Um, Tony is a pretty spectacular guy. Uh, the things that he, he makes are unbelievable. We're going to touch on that, but the, we like to start and sort of get a feel for, for the person. Um, cause I mean, these are things that maybe might not come up much and that connected with the making just, just creates a great freaking uh, window into, into the person's world. So, um, I'll just ask you one, a couple of more things about, you know, growing up your area and stuff. Um, what was, what, what were your interests? Just, what were the things that you were interested in, uh, entertainment as a kid growing up? What are <coughs> like, landmark moments? It could be anything from things that were going on on, on TV to it, pop culture things. Give us a little bit of that, of things that, that burned, uh, an impression into you. Well, I was I was born in '77, so I was an '80s kid. Uh, Star Wars was huge. Uh, Transformers was like Transformers and Legos were like that was it when I was a kid, and um, that influenced me a lot. Obviously, with the making and tinkering and how things work, and uh, <clears throat> um, a lot of uh, you know all different facets of music uh, movies back to the future was like huge when i was a kid i remember watching that constantly on vhs you know just kind of the, an 80s kid that is awesome dude and i'll just say for the record every anytime there I, by the way i'm mentioning this but i'm not recommending it what's so freaking ever I, I i also belong to a podcast with brian bales 
Doc Jared Hildebrandt and Ryan Bitters. And there's always a fight. It has nothing to do with, with making. It's it's just guys shooting the breeze, talking about growing up. And Bales is like my age and we're like 80s. Cause, well, he doesn't seem to remember the 80s whatsoever. Tony just mentioned, you know, Tony's a couple of years younger uh, than, than me. And he mentioned basically the timeline that I remember of the cool things. And Bales is like, I just wanted to, I don't know why, I just felt like attacking the guy. But um <laughs> So, so, so cool. All right. Um, so tell us about how you got into the community or yeah, into, into the community. What, what, what sort of directed you into the community with all these people that we <clears throat> all know and, and share commonalities with? It was, it was pretty much just an accident, really. I'm, I'm pretty introverted, surprisingly enough. Um, but I'm, I'm very introverted outside of the maker community. And <clears throat> one day I saw Andrew Aragon's group. I like to make stuff. And I was like, well, I like Bob Claggett. So I just started really getting into the YouTube videos. So I joined that and I joined it maybe one or two months after Berkey was in and then Lutz and all of a sudden, you know, those guys always have their hand on your back, you know, and they were really supportive 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 and i just saw how much how much they embraced you you know and and i just kind of it, it gave me my footing in order to get my voice and show what i do and what i like to do and it just took off from there embrace is that what you call it <laughs> you know about embracing so well there's a couple of iconic pictures um and I say iconic. <laughs> it could be. It could be complete total disaster. But 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 I'll I'll use the iconic. Do you have that somewhere, JP? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let me uh, keep you in frame. So I just want to. I'm going to ask from an outsider. Thank goodness. Um, it seems that you have a British guy um, wrapped around you, and and although you're smiling. You, you do have your hand, there's blockage occurring. So what, what, what where was this? Tell us about it. <clears throat> I don't know if it was blockage or he just basically bum rushed me. That was in the <laughs> hotel in Atlanta, in the lobby with about a hundred <laughs> people, maybe, maybe 150 and only half of them were makers. So there's probably people with stories. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome, dude. <laughs> we'll see a lot of a lot of folks um well we all know there's a lot of love in, in the community you know um and and there's a lot of appreciation for for each other and inspiration there's a lot of that everybody out here um um can attest to that let me before we continue uh jp could you run down who we have out there with us yep i can do no worries uh we've got uh bales, we, uh bales we've got uh mackenzie uh jim dockrell uh cousin paul uh james parker oj's woodworking crafts jim dockrell dan harju uh james parker did i just say that one uh i can't remember uh, i've just said it again if i did <clears throat> uh steve nealon or high nil media uh let's keep scrolling back up uh frankie cnc woodworking channel um, I believe he's struggling to get to 100 subscribers, so go subscribe. Uh, Dr. Jared Hildebrand, Anna's Woodshop, uh, Workshop, sorry. Uh, Tony's out there as well. Bobbley's Workshop. Uh, Bobbley's Woodshop. I think I've just said that one, didn't I? I don't know. But yeah, that's it. Oh, John from Be Happy and Peanut Butter is out there. Uh, and that's about it. Awesome, dude. All right. Well, um, so. Oh, and Chris Q. Sorry. What's going on, Chris and everybody? All right. So, Tony, tell us what does your. You have a lot of. Um, you have a lot of projects that you go through. I mean, how's your day look like? You're building a lot of cool stuff. Can you give us a little bit about your, your day, generally speaking? <clears throat> yeah, I, I generally work. Uh, seven to four at a, a small machine shop about 20 miles from me um when i get home at four 
I try to do as few chores as possible so I can get down in the shop. Um, Mackenzie can attest to that. Uh, I'm usually in the shop from four till, till about nine with a break in between for dinner. That's usually when I, uh, get the most out of my tools. I'm not a weekend person. I tend to get distracted a lot on the weekend because usually we have to, you know, run errands or something's going on or there's a party or I just, I tend to be most productive in those like evening hours. So that's generally when I do my tool making. Uh, Mackenzie has three kids from a previous marriage. So I try to juggle. There's half the week they're not with us. So I try to get as much tool making done as possible then. And then I can spend some time with them. Um, uh, and then in the weekend, I try to do as much as possible, but it seems like the, the weeknights are where I get most of my work done. I wish I was one. I, I hear these guys that work in the shop till midnight, one in the morning, and I'm just, I'm not built that way. <laughs> I mean, the equipment, I mean, any, any equipment, any shop is dangerous, but, uh, it's just, uh, I, I, w I wish I had more of a, uh, I don't know if fortitude's the right word, but I wish I could produce a little more because my backlog is quite uh, extensive. But the nice thing is, is generally people that order custom tooling, they realize that it's handmade and it takes time. So I'm lucky with that. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna share um, some photos, uh, Instagram photos, and sort of so that folks can see what you do because it's highly custom, you know, um, a lot of custom orders, right? Yes. Oh yeah. 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 You, you, if there's, I don't, it basically you, you, you can buy stuff off of my Etsy store, but there's options. It's, I don't just walk up to a shelf and pull something off and put it in a box and ship it out. Right. It's, it's you want a certain square with a certain wood whether you want your logo or initials or just the standard, there's still a lot of custom to it. And then the planes are, you know, that's a whole entity unto itself. All right. We're going to get to, to those things, but let's, so JP um, was <laughs> writing here off to the side. And um, so go ahead, JP, do your, do your bit, man. Yeah. Uh, first of all, Mackenzie said that she would like to add that Tony is a machine. So, that's that's interesting. Uh, so, uh, uh, a quick comment from uh, Mackenzie. She said, "She said cow tipping with a question mark." Oh, I think she was referring to things I did as a kid. No, we never cow tipped. I've never seen anybody cow tip. I don't think I would get near close enough to a cow to cow tip. So, okay. Uh, it, uh, another question that seems to be a, an ongoing theme at the moment comes from Anna's wood, uh, workshop it says, when can we expect a calendar? The calendar. That's a, that's another, that's a McKenzie question. She holds the key to that. Yeah. we got a more in-depth answer on the podcast. <laughs> if you, uh, if you go to that episode, uh, right. A question from doc. He said, uh, favorite tool to use at work and at home. At work is probably, I, uh, I run a, a five axis vertical Haas milling machine and that's, uh, it's very, it's very technical. It's very rewarding and it's also very punishing when you mess up. So you have to really be on your toes programming it and running it. Um, home, probably the wood lathe, um, because everything I do is, it just, because of my job, everything I do is very precision. And you make this to this, and it has to be this, or it's not right. Or with the wood lathe, it's just such a freeform thing that, you know, I, that's one thing I hope once I get caught up, I, I want to do more, more turning. Yeah. Yeah, the wood tells you what it wants to be. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, Jim Dockrell's got a question. Uh, it's it's kind of funny because they're all asking funny questions over there. So they're, they're kind of going right serious one this time. So the next two questions have both got right serious question this time. 
Uh, right, there goes, uh, um, you have to excuse me if I pronounce this wrong. Are FANUC controllers very popular on CNC machines down there? Uh, yeah, um, the Haas has their own control system. We have a uh, horizontal boring mill, it's called the Nomura, that runs a FANUC controller or FANUC, however you want to pronounce it. I've heard it pronounced both ways. There's okay. your tactical CNC question. <laughs> There you go. And uh, a question from Daniel Harju also says, serious question this time. Um, he says, uh, Tony, how is it going? Because you kind of blew up last year, right? Yeah, uh, things things took off. Uh, yeah, Jay Bates did a uh, an unbox. He ordered a plane from me and did an unboxing video. And I still get inquiries to this day and it's the videos well over a year where people inquire about it. And that's what really took off uh, the tool end of it. And then I came up with the squares after the planes and they've done well too, but the planes have just been a beast of their own. Mm -hmm. uh, that's it for the time being, Eloy. Okay. <laughs> All right. So let's, let's go ahead and, and bring up the, the page and just so that folks can see what you're what you're doing let me share a screen here okay i'm presenting and we'll go over all right so i guess we can start with the uh the branding irons Give us a little bit about about that, dude. How did you start? You know, with the branding irons and <coughs> all the requests and stuff. I know that last year you're not, you're not screen sharing, Eloy. I'm not. No. Uh, that's why. Is that why Tony was totally quiet? And I'm thinking in my mind. I, I, I'm thinking in my mind. Well, isn't Tony a, a clue here? What's What's wrong with Tony, man? There we are. Can you see it? Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. So talk to us a little bit about the branding irons. <clears throat> well, um, the machine shop I work at, the owner of the machine shop, um, he allows us to use the machines and the equipment after hours, as long as we're respectful. And, you know, obviously, um, in his thought processes is that the more we use the machines, the more experienced we're going to be. And, me being a maker, you're giving me the keys to a hundred, hundred and fifty thousand, two hundred thousand two hundred thousand dollar machine. So I decided to try to think, you know, what could I make? Uh, you know, what could I make with this? And I thought, well, I'll make a branding iron for myself. And I made two. I made one for myself and I made one for Duresta. And I put it, I, I used mine and I put Jimmy's in a drawer somewhere and I, it was like six six months or so before I sent it to him, and uh, he was over the moon when he got it. And uh, he's just such a nice guy. But uh, I made my <clears throat> I made my first iron, and it was like in June. And I posted it to the group, and everybody thought it was great, you know. And and I got you know positive feedback for it, and I used it. And then Alex Gilmore in the uh, group, the Pork Belly Woodworks, um, that was the first iron that I made. He approached me in like September and wanted me to, to, to do an iron for him. And once I made that, he, had, he was a big you know, supporter of mine and really tooted his horn and, and, and it just started to steamroll from there. And I did, I started doing a lot of the, uh, for a lot of the people and I like to make stuff group. And then I discovered Instagram and it just kind of went on from there. And, uh, it's, uh, I don't do branding iron so much anymore. It's a tremendous amount of work to do with, to deal with people's artwork because sometimes things aren't perfect. So it's hard to, to program with a CNC. Um, and also my other tools have kind of taken over and taken the, the time slot that I have, but I will people that 
I interact with personally in the groups and stuff, I will still do irons for. Nice. Yeah, this is um, Derek, right, yep. from Bull City. <laughs> yep. He was number three, <laughs> or the second guy. Alex was first, and then he was the third. All right, let's continue up here. What chuck is this, dude? That was a... Uh, <clears throat> I used to work for a medical facility that made uh, catheters and stuff, and I was a machinist there, <clears throat> and they got a bunch of these little lathes in. <clears throat> Excuse me. They got a bunch of these little lathes in to, to do something with, and they had all these... They're like the little, uh, I think Talon is the brand name, the little wood lathe chucks. And uh, I, they were going to throw them out, and I took them, and I just tucked them away in a box, you know, uh, for a couple years. And then I ended up buying a small jet mini lathe, and uh, I needed a, a chuck, so I was able to take that and modify that. And what I did is <clears throat> I... You, I'm pointing at the picture. That makes no sense. But uh, the ring is holding the jaws tight so I can indicate. What I was doing is, is on the other side, I was boring through and truing that so I could turn a thread on the inside so that would thread onto my lathe. So that was the chuck, the, the wood lathe chucks in my metal lathe, and I was modifying it to fit the little, the little uh, jet mini lathe. Nice. You can tell me to stop when, oh, nice, nice box, dude. Yeah, I wanted to do, uh, Pat Lap inspired me to do that. He did a, uh, he did a, uh, a, a finial, a little box with a finial, and I wanted to, to give it a shot. I like how the lid goes up and then the finial fits in there. Like, you know, I love that. Yeah, you and know. that was, that was spalted maple. I think that was just a chunk of firewood. Which that's always that's another thing about the lathe that I really enjoy is, is I can just walk out into my wood burning pile and just grab something and turn it. I mean to say that that's firewood that's just insane, insane I say. Look how cool. We're gonna move up. I went down quite a bit here just to start <coughs> off, but there's a lot of the um, whoa. The that was a, a a backgammon table I made for my cousin. She commissioned me to make it for her husband. And if you go on to the next few pictures, you'll see the progression of it. It was made with a a walnut carcass with a ash and walnut veneer made that playing surface. And then I was able to get offcuts of Corian, the solid surface uh, material for countertops. Yeah, from a. Uh, uh, like a uh, an industrial cabinet maker, they they do like doctor's offices and stuff. And I actually CNC the checkers out with their initials in them, and that's what the were the the backgammon chips. <laughs> what a trip! How how big? Where's your where's your shop? Low is it? Is your shop at home? Yep, it's in my cellar. Actually, I have a <clears throat> my house is kind of on a side hill. And I have uh, two double doors that open up to the outside so I can just walk in. There's no stairs to my cellar. And that's where my uh, shop is. Those are the, the checkers out of Corian. That stuff was wonderful to work with. Nice. What's going on here, dude? Um, every it's, it's turned into every other year, but, uh, every other year we had, we clean up the shop really, really well. And, uh, the machine shop and we make ornaments and they used to just, they were, uh, more and more, they were, they were simpler. And of course they let me loose on it. And I just, my maker mind went a little cuckoo and, uh, we, I had a 3D printer at home, so I started 3D printing the little uh, ornaments, and then we, we machined the gears at the shop. And it, we also have the, uh, we have the machine running without the coolant, so people can come up and watch the machines run while they're, you know, enjoying the party. Very cool. 
that's a trip and a half, dude. That's yeah, that's in Tarsia. It's it's uh different layers of wood. Uh that's pretty much all cedar. There's a little bit of there's just a little chunk of walnut, I believe, uh, that makes the thorn of that that rose. That was from a pattern from a book. And it's funny because you've been doing so much and we did go back because you did mention, you know, oh, I've got a lot of woodworking stuff and I, I kind of stopped rolling back, but you guys can check um, Tony's Instagram and see, you know, the woodworking as well. You've, it's just lately for the past, I don't know how long you've been heavy duty doing some incredible things, which we're going to get to here when you start doing the planes. Um, and now I think of, of, yeah, I think of, you know, machining and, right yeah that's primarily what i've done is 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 machining cuz because with the tool orders it's been uh it's been very predominant that's a trip and a half this ball that was uh yeah that i made that for my grandmother and um when she passed i was lucky and it, i basically ripped it out of everybody's hands cuz i wanted it back but that was a a pattern from wood magazine and they were just little sun catchers each of those designs and i took uh plexiglass and i sanded the plexiglass to give it like a frosted look yeah and that's copper flashing that i scrolled out on the scroll saw and i decided to glue all the panels together and make a a, a lantern out of it very cool oh that is uh, my outfeed table, which is uh, a modified pulk bench that uh, we all call him Cousin Paul. Uh, Paul Granger, uh, New York Granger, uh, helped me design that. And if you look at the bottom, you can see the PVC pipes. That was a plan for a, a low workbench from fine woodworking. And all those PVC, I can't remember how many hundreds of feet of PVC is in that thing. Uh, that's where all my clamp storage is, is they all slide into the different, there's four sides that you can access that clamp uh, storage from. Obviously with my table saw there, I can't access one side, but uh, it's, it's, it's very, very valuable to have everything together. <clears throat> yep. Yeah, and there's the, the router table, the router lift. You can tell me to stop if there's anything you want to point that out. Was, that was my first segmented piece, the the one that's glued up. That that was really fun to do. I, I enjoy doing segmenting a lot because obviously, you know, he, he, it's hard to get large, large pieces of wood. So this was just a nice discovery to figure out, you know, you can, you can, turn a lot from basically scraps you know yeah that came out beautiful dude thanks i want to get to your uh the planes If there's anything you see as we're going up, tell me to stop and mention it. On behalf of Eloy, I want to say thanks to Dan Harju and Anna's workshop for the Super Chats. Oh, th thank you, Anna. Thank you, Dan. I appreciate that so much. Unfortunately, you, can't, you, can't, you that, can't see while he's screen sharing. Yeah, I can't see what's going on. That, uh, the CAD drawing, that was the, uh, that was the design. Um, and then as you can see in the description, I was on a podcast called MakerCast. It's podcast for makers now. He John renamed it. But I was on there and he contacted me, I think it was in the spring, and he said, uh, I'm doing a huge giveaway and all the people that I've had on, I'm going to have them either make something or donate stuff. And they had Daresta, Mark Spagnolo a lot of a lot of uh big names and i just was you know this no name guy on instagram and uh i felt that i had to bring my a game and that's and i've always wanted to make a, 
an infill plane. That's what those styles are called. But I never really saw a block plane style that was this that had the wood infill. And uh, not only that, not only that, but is this is this this has never been done before, or am I wrong? No, it, it's a common it's a common practice in these style planes. But a lot of times those planes are so custom, you you just you don't buy them off the shelf. The metal dovetailing. Yeah, I've never. I've, I'm not like a metal guy, so I I wouldn't know. I only get you know from what I hear from you guys and stuff. So I'm not a. But um, when I saw these, it's more like art, dude. When I saw your complete, when it you know when it came out and you you showed you sh shared the pictures, I was like, holy smokes, dude! This is like, this isn't. <laughs> You don't even want to use it. It's like beautiful, you know. <laughs> um, I don't know how many people. I think everybody knows though. But um, how many of these? Can you tell us like the, the the different? How many of these models do you have? Is it just the one? I mean, it's just the one for now. I I've been so I, I've had a handful of guys like Harju wants me to try to tackle a smoothing plane, like a bigger plane. I just. I've been so inundated with these that I've just kind of, and I've also had a hard, hard time trying to come up with my own style for a smoothing plane. I don't know. I don't really just want to make a bigger one of those, you know, cause there's a lot of uh, technical things that change when you go from just a standard low angle block plane to a, uh, to an actual smoothing plane. Dude, this is amazing work, dude. I mean, and so, how long let's go over here to this how how long more i mean can you tell us i mean what the the work that goes into this how how long what are we looking at how many man hours i mean <clears throat> the the first one's probably 120 hours i think but that was design and the one thing i had to do and i had to utilize my my uh skills as a cnc machinist i had to figure out a way to not necessarily mass produce them but i had to do a certain amount i couldn't just make one or two i had to do like 10 of them because with machining most of the time is invested is in setup is uh what you do with setup so if it takes you an hour to set something up and five minutes to cut it you want to have 10 or 20 pieces behind that to kind of offset that time so I found if I can do at least a minimum of 10, I do anywhere from 10 to 20 a batch and that gets it down to they're about 10 hours a piece. I think I haven't really sat down and crunched the numbers in a business sense because it's something I, I'm not losing money and I'm not, I'm not making pennies an hour, but it's just something I don't fret over a lot. It's, I feel comfortable with what I get for it. So, and what, um, so how far back are you? What's your backlog? I mean, are you really, uh, stuck in the mud and you've got a lot of work? Or what's what? Give us a little well, bit of that. What I do is, is I have a waiting list and I have, I do like a batch. Like I've got a batch right now of 16 hand block planes. Everybody puts a down payment to save a spot. They tell me what they want for a wood infill and then I'll make them. And while I'm making them, I'll reach out to like the next 20 people and I'm doing a batch now. That's probably going to be late September, mid October. Right. So once I start those, I'll reach out to the next batch and I'm about, I'm doing more than I was. So I'm about a year out. There's about a year wait just to get on the, to get into the batches right. i think uh i think bales wants his money back because his, his one doesn't fly <laughs> that was the greatest thing ever i laughed so hard when i saw that i had a guy in the machine shop that freaked out and he's like he threw that and i'm like do you really think he threw that plane out the window <laughs> <laughs> There's my fi there's my contribution to the fidget spinner craze. <laughs> we just had um, Ray from Ray Makes on, yep. 
and um he told us the story of he he made the gears right the real oh gears. yeah his his things were those things were art they were phenomenal i loved seeing the stuff ray did with those the cubes and everything it was awesome well it turns out i don't know if you knew this but um it turns out that um a company or people in china um snagged his designs and started to mass produce them flooding yeah, the I, I saw that on a post oh uh, that was a the there's a bandsaw box down just a little that was that was fun that was a, a david picciuto uh design that was uh a bandsaw box I made for Mackenzie and I made our wedding favor. We had a very small wedding. So I decided to make our wedding favors and there were these little bud vases for flowers. And I made these rings that had uh, Mackenzie and Tony and then <coughs> two twenty eight fourteen our anniversary. And I inset that in there. And that was a, that was a, f I, I love doing that. Uh, uh, Jason knuckles. I don't know if you're aware of him. He makes some really, really, really nice bandsaw boxes. Is he related to Heath? <laughs> no, I don't. But it's different spelling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that oh, was the one I made for a bunch of guys in the group. <laughs> Very cool. Here's the, the plane. Yeah, you know, I'll tell you what, though, dude. Um, I don't know if, if you've heard me mention this before, uh, but... So like things like this, right? This piece that you, you've been um, making and it's, they're getting out there. I don't know if they're numbered or not, or if you have the first few, but I don't know how that works. Um, do you, have you ever or no? Well, it, it's, it's kind of like the, what the guys say, it's, it's the cobbler that ha doesn't have any shoes. I made the, that one. And Mark Schaefermeyer from Make Tinker Share won the, the giveaway, and I was ecstatic because I knew who he was, and um, he won it, and he he got that one. That I didn't serialize, or I think I I can't remember if I serialized it or not. But the first one of the production went to a guy named uh, Luis Gonzalez. Oh yeah, from Puerto yes. Rico, right? Yes. Yep. Luis has number one. Izzy has number two. Him and Izzy fought constantly over who would get number one. Um, but Luis flew me down to Puerto Rico, so I kind of had to uh, give him number one. But uh, I have I made my own in that batch because I knew if I didn't take the time to make mine, I would never have one. So I did that, and I didn't do that for the squares, and I finally had to just take like a reject square that I have and make my own so i have them because i'll be wandering around the shop trying to look for a square when there's like 12 of them just finished in boxes you know waiting to be shipped but this one this one you're saying that this one's the one that went to to mark from uh make tinker share <laughs> yes he won the the maker cast giveaway and that's that's the original because if you once we go on a little further you'll see can you see how that pin goes across the cap that was the one thing that I, I wanted to try to change on the plane. I wanted the, 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 the cap iron to encapsulate that pin just to give it a cleaner look. And the second revision, that was basically the, the, the only thing I changed out of the whole. Oh, and I added a little bit of a curve to the back. It was. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. So you're telling me, you're telling me that, that this, so you no longer, this, this is like, the only, is he the only one or the only like yeah he's the only one that's basically the prototype the first one i made was that was it okay so he's got essentially the best one in my opinion and yeah. i'll tell you, and i'll tell you why historically like i always tell people the same damn story they're probably gonna get tired of it but i don't care because it's like it's i think it's true i don't know we'll find out or not but like a hundred years from now we won't find out because we won't be around but a hundred years from now, there's going to be like the futuristic, um, what is it, roadside, um, vintage roadshow, PBS, whatever. I, I'm sure you've seen them, Tony. Oh yeah, yeah, antiques roadshow. And and it's but it's going to be futuristic with like Buck Rogers like uh, foil on on you know wrapped around clothing, um, and yeah. like transporters and all that. But when when 
the family member of the family member of the cousin, or maybe they sold it because of this and that, and it ended up in Alaska, and then in Russia, and then for some reason, and then Japan, and then somebody takes it to the show, a little uh, old granny from like the year 2563, and they will be able to know that this one was uniquely the prototype and then when they they say, "Would you like to know how much it was?" They're gonna, they're, and she'll she'll say, well, "I I have no idea. It's just it's just <laughs> in the family for sentimental reasons." And he says, "It's a million and five hundred space credits." Oh no, I can retire. <laughs> and so I totally see the stuff that that we make. Um, you know, having that sort of uh, it's silly, I know, but believe me, I think it's possible. What do you think? <laughs> it's very possible. That was, uh, if you see the the video game, that was an arcade I made. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with like Arduinos and Raspberry Pi. I I'm I'm familiar with them because everybody talks about all the the, the computer uh, geeks in our our groups, which which are awesome. They talk about it, but I have no personal idea how the hell they work. Yeah, I don't have much either. I just kind of, I still am befuddled on how I got this to work. But this is a Raspberry Pi, and what it does is it runs what's called an emulator. And you can load uh, older video games into it up to... I, I, I love you have Castlevania on Oh, that. I love Castlevania. Dude, um, I love Castlevania, dude. And uh, the, the cabinet is out of walnut. And if you scroll around, there's the sides. What I did is I took the... Uh, what, what am I scrolling around? Uh, just in my feed, you'll see there. There's there's these aluminum. Uh, yeah, those right there. That's part of it. I took uh, like that's the Intellivision guy, and there's a Zelda symbol, and there's Mortal Kombat up at the top. I engraved all these characters on the side of the aluminum. What a trip and a half, dude! I love. See, you know, I see. I love. I love because it's like '80s and stuff, and retro and. And all that. I, I love that. And the fact that you can combine like intricately, um, you know, specific designs in metal and incorporate it into uh, a wood project. I mean, this is like a perfect example of like melding all sorts of stuff. I love the, the ability to be able to, to, you know, look at that dude, all lit up. Um, uh, I'm limited in that respect. It's not like I can, it's, I can easily, it's easily readily available for me to do like, something like that you know mm -hmm. i think i might have to get a laser so that if you on the low uh, b below lando calarizian on the left hand side by your mouse there's that's the second revision of the cap i put that hump in it and what that does is there's a cutout in there you'll see in the the, the future photos um that kind of covers up that pin and i think it gives it a little more of a a flow to it to the block plane it, it's such an awesome thing um i just it's freaking mind-blowing look at that we're gonna we're gonna go back to our faces so that people don't uh go stir crazy but <laughs> there's a lot of cool things happening here I, I you know we encourage folks to check out the description um see here's another like there, just total loving moment right there's i that was me giving izzy his plane so he was very gracious. <laughs> um, we're gonna go back to the the uh, oh and 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 by the way, all the links to everything, uh, Tony, JP, and I are in the description. Let me stop sharing. And are we good now? Where you guys, if you talk, it can go back to you. You can talk. Yeah. Jamie, Jamie's muted, but yeah. Yeah, we actually uh, I've got a, a question uh, okay. from uh, Mackenzie okay. for Tony, uh, and uh, the question is: Have you come up with any new designs while sitting on the beach, and what are they? Uh we we went out. We took a long weekend. Uh, her mother rents a, a house in rented a house in Martha's Vineyard, and so we were at the beach a lot. And I'm not a a person to I can't just sit still. I always have to be tinkering. So what I decided to do was take a sketchbook with me and uh, design, try to design a smoother. I ended up uh, basically without 
subconsciously basically ripping off another custom plane maker's design. I just started sketching and realized what I drew. So that, that kind of pissed me off. But, uh, I, I did, I have, I've had a thing in my head. Um, I've had people bug me about marking gauges and I, I kind of, I like, I would like to do something that incorporated multiple things that like maybe with like an exacto knife and a scribe and an all like almost make something interchangeable, but do with the metal and wood. Um, I don't know if I can do it. So that's why I don't want to get too far into it. I have to see if I can even make the goddamn thing first. I have it in my head but there's almost an element of blacksmithing to it that I want to try to do, but I don't even know if I can do that. So that's primarily what I was drawing on was this, this almost like a multi-tool, but a nice, you know, uh, you know, handmade, you know, like I said, the brass and the wood and that kind of thing. If you can think it, you can do it. That's, that's what I'm hoping. <laughs> there you go. Uh, right, I think there's one more uh, from OJ. I think it's kind of along the same lines. He goes, "Are there any future projects in the works?" <clears throat> oh, I, I do, I do want to make a bevel gauge, the the thing that you fold out to check angles. I have a design in my head, and I, I want to do. It's going to be very similar to the to the steel squares and the brass squares. Um, the blade, I want to try to do something special with. Again, it's one of those things. I have the idea in my head. I don't know if it would execute well. So I'm kind of keeping that close to my, keeping the cards close to my vest. Okay. Uh, we've got a question from uh, Tracy Keaton. Uh, first of all, she says she's seen your, uh, your awesome tool. She says they're uh, beautifully done. Uh, but the question is, how does she get on the short list? Um, thank you, Tracy. Uh, the best thing to do is just shoot me an email. Uh, it's hillviewwm at gmail.com. Just shoot me a message, and that just gives me a spot where I, I, I just basically have the the list going. And uh, when your time is ready, I just shoot you an email, say, hey, I have a spot. You, If you want in, then we proceed from there. Okay. Uh, that's it for the time being, Eloy. Okay, just to be clear though, um, because I, I I'm I'm hung up on on that because I I just um I mean the whole purpose of of the Mad Maker show is that to look back in time maybe not that long who knows maybe maybe so maybe not but um so can we officially say because see people can look back for the record when they're in that um uh you know uh, what do you call it what, what what did we call it the space the the, the space um antiques road show um, <laughs> yeah. So they can look back. We're gonna to have to trace this back because this this appears to be a, a rouleau, but we we're, we don't know. It, we have to go to the archives. <laughs> well, yeah, they'll, they'll say they'll say they'll say because in the year twenty ninety five, there was these guys from I don't know uh, Pennsylvania, and they this, and they copied them and they flooded the market, and we have to find out if this is his net, and then they can go back and they'll stumble across this and they'll see you saying. Nope, make Tinker Share has the original. And in fact, it's because this piece. So can we say that that piece eventually will be the most sought after because it's it's the, the first one? Or are you going to say that number one and number two, which you did mark, right? Yeah, all the, the uh, everything under that, that cap iron that holds the blade down that I changed under that has the date has my uh the hilvy wooden metal and it has the serial number and the revision number too Just and oh no go ahead go ahead and finish nope, that was it and i know that doc because one night in uh, on hangouts doc busted out with with one of your pieces as well he was like check it out it was like ah. <laughs> and um so who else out there that we know of <laughs> Maybe some of the people I won't know, but has your your pieces. Name them off. Izzy has my first squares that I did. Number uh, the I've first. I've got to play with that one when I went to see Izzy's shop. 
<laughs> the first uh, 12 inch and first six inch. Um, Joel Crawford has the first uh, four inch square that I did. Uh, I, I made a, a square for Duresta. Um, Jay, I sent Jay a uh, Jay Bates a square just because you know he he helped me so much with with his uh the video that he did um <clears throat> trying to think uh i've got one for harju when he comes to the to my house this summer he's got uh number 13 it was funny i uh when i made planes let some people get hung up on the number 13 and i was like i think i posted and i like to mike stuff i was like I don't know if I should just skip and no. do 12 and 14. And Harju was all over that. He's like, no, no, give me 13. So yeah, dude, are you kidding me? That's perfect. <laughs> but, uh, it's, uh, there, there's, I think I've made, I think I've made roughly 125 squares so far. Um, I know I have 42 planes out in the wild. Besides this, this next batch, uh, but uh, it, there's a lot of people that have bought. Uh, and in the, the humbling thing, it's it's the piece, it's the people that buy it that I don't, have no clue who they are. It's not like, like uh, you know, cousin Paul buys one because he feels sorry for me. It's the people that you know reach out that I have no clue who they are. They're not following me on Instagram or whatever. They just they just see it and they're, they, they like it. And the one thing I, I try to encourage everybody to, to do is to use them because that was the most, I, I wanted to make something that I thought looked nice, but I wanted it to function even better. Yeah. And I've got like, like okay. Harju, Harju and Jay Bates and uh, a handful of guys use theirs every day. And there's other guys that put theirs on a shelf. Izzy, he, he had his all engraved by a, uh, uh, Jenny yeah, Bauer. Bauer, yeah, and it's beautiful. But he's like, yeah, he's like, I just, it's going on a shelf, and he's gonna rub it with diapers. That's what he said. He's gonna rub it with cloth diapers. So See, that's that's. Uh, I I kind of would feel that way. Yeah, yeah, because you don't want to, <laughs> you know. I, I don't know, dude. Well, because it it feels like it's it's also it's fun. Obviously, it's completely functional, but at the same time, it's like, do I want to? you know somehow damage it i'm I'm one of those people when it comes i, to I had a i had a uh i had a timber framer drop his eight feet onto concrete and it it hit just perfect to where it it dinged it up but he sent it back to me and i was able to kind of massage it and get it back into working condition and it, it looks pretty good there's like a tiny dent in the corner um there's somebody else in the chat room that may have dropped theirs besides bales that I, I don't want to throw them under the bus, but, uh, <coughs> it's happened, but go, I just go, recommend go, go, go ahead. No, say it. Say, and by the way, you're not, so, we never told you so, but you're not supposed to look at the chat wall because we want you. Oh, to I'm sorry. Uh, no, no, no. It's good. <laughs> we never told you the, the, the idea of this is so that the guest is completely in the zone, but, but you're, you're it's, it's fine. So who is it? You got to tell us now. Call him out. He, he just, he just spoke up. So as and Dan, I'm, Dan I <laughs> his his is called mud flap. He calls it mud flap. It's number thirteen. And something special I do is on the the back of the plane. On there's the blade adjuster. It makes the blade go in and out. What I normally do is I thought is something nice and custom to do was I I'll engrave your initials or your shop logo if I can fit it in there. Well, I asked Harju what he wanted. He wanted the mud flap girl. You know the girls on the mud flaps that yes. either way. So that's why he calls his mud flap. So. Right. <laughs> so um you're going to hell for that one. I'll tell you what. <laughs> um Daniel. Um so I was looking, I was just looking now, and do you have okay, let me ask you this, right? So do you have an exorbitant amount of like haters out there enemies or no no knock on wood i i don't get <laughs> i don't get trolls i've had a couple i had one guy 
I was I was sharpening something. I was sharpening a lathe tool on Instagram, and he basically said, "Don't worry, sport, you'll get it someday." And I just kind of scratched my head, but I don't get haters. I I don't know why. I'm no, I'm jinxing myself, but oh, wait, so you're 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 superstitious? Who was it? Where's my phone? <laughs> just, just, bringing up, just bringing up that 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 subject that's like superstitious no i'm saying because i was looking at my because it's somebody was saying i think it was in the uh makers international group uh show and they were saying oh it doesn't matter i always start a video and there's always one uh thumbs down yeah right and i i just i just looked and there's five thumbs down so now so i always get the occasional thumbs down. There's there's some ass wipe out there that that mm -hmm. has some sort of resentment and stuff. Look, I just want to say to everybody out there, uh, if, if the person is in hiding or not, I, I want to say it like this: I have to live my life, right, and get on with it, right. I don't I don't I don't have any ill will. I'm gonna do my thing five to ten to a hundred million times more. Not to piss you off, but because I'm just gonna do my thing. Life is short to have a little winky like like you do to freaking be doing that, right? And the reason I'm saying that is that it it like they were mentioning it on the uh, what do you call it on the Makers International that that Jamie hosts uh, on Sundays. And I just went and saw five, so I've multiplied my freaking my freaking. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But I just want to say that 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 whoever, do it to me face to face and let's see. I have no ill will. I just say, oh, dude, I'm sorry because I bet you some 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 really uh, small person out there. I just wanted to say that. I usually don't even mention that thing, but I want to say because it's inconceivable, right? When I see my friends uh, anywhere on the internet, even if they're not, so I, I always give encouragement because people that actually make things. You know, they know that failure is the the constant and then successes occur here and there. And there's a balance. That's why there's a lot of love in the maker community, uh, because we know, right, that it's a struggle. It's not like Tony just came out and, hey, look what I did, because I just I, I sneezed and, and, and a plane just popped out of my <laughs> yeah, nose. Cause and I, have, I, have a, I have a mountain of scrap too. you know, things that I've messed up or things didn't go the right way you know it that's just that's that's just what it is you, you fail you know there's no if ands or buts about it there's times where you stumble and you fail and and the best thing you can do is learn from that you know and, and just keep going you know and like i said i i've had planes where i've spent all this time to put them together and they're just slightly a little too mismatched there's a gap in them they just, it's just something I don't feel right selling to a person. So I, you know, send, um, send them to, send them to, to, to Mark, uh, from make Tinker share. Cause he's going to have a collection in like the <laughs> 2095 and he'll say, these are all the ones he didn't want to sell these are the <laughs> ones guys. And you, <laughs> there's, there's going to be a whole market for it. <laughs> uh, we've, got, we've got to mention the, uh, the slip and slide apparently. Oh yeah. Oh, uh, uh, apparently uh, I've got to get Tony to get Eloy to attend. You should, Eloy, July 21st, upstate New York. Be there. Uh, about five years ago, I, uh, it was, or no, it was more than that. It was like six years ago or seven. Um, I was looking for something for Mackenzie's kids to do. And I decided, well, we have, we're in like a, a, a field and there's a real long side hill next to the house that we actually used to sled down as kids. I, my house is built on a chunk of property from my grandparents' farm. And, uh, so I, I bought a piece of plastic from my dad at his hard, at the hardware store he works at. And I put it down and the kids had a great time and the adults would just fly off the end and stumble and so i figured well the next time i did it it was the following year i made it instead of like 50 feet i made it 100 feet and then the next year i made it 150 feet and now it's ended up to be about 250 feet um and i have these big ridiculous 
jerry-rigged uh, PVC sprinklers that's, that keep the, wa- the water going down the plastic. And last year, uh, I kind of pushed it more towards the makers to have guys in my area come and visit. And um, Matt Haas came up. He drove up from Pennsylvania. And Paul Desmond came from Maryland. Keith Decent came. Uh, Jimmy Duresta came. Uh, Chris Cute was there. Uh, Jay Rivera. There was a whole bunch of people. Izzy was coming through with Jesse Ueda and uh, it was just like the stars aligned or something. And there was this little maker hangout at my house and it was just, uh, it was unreal. Well, we're doing it again and it's uh, July 21st and uh, we're, we've got people coming up from Georgia. I believe Joel and Margot Crawford are coming. Uh, and there's just a whole, mess of people that are going to come and they're actually going to camp and you know it's uh it's going to be a hopefully be a good thing you know i'm i'm i gotta make sure my shop is spotless <laughs> i just don't want them to see this crap hole that i work in i want them to see the uh the uh the the perfect shop that i work in so but uh i'm looking forward to it and uh i think it's going to be a great time yeah i saw the the uh, photos and video. I think Matt Haas. Yes, um, Matt did a video on it, and Keith did too. Keith did a really nice video too. It, 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 it's, it's awesome to watch that, um, even vi- you know vicariously. Um, dude, I'm down here and and see. I would want to go up there and stay in the air conditioning. <laughs> it's, so, it's so dang hot down here, dude. It's it, yeah. seriously like look. I just I'll just say this. I know that we're we're drifting a little bit, but I just want to say this. Dude, I don't know why people decided to freaking call you know colonize Florida. It is impossible, dude. It is so hot. You when so you know how you in your day to day you're working and you're doing your thing, but it's like imagine this vapor pressing on you and it really uh, like it gets your your mind. It it's sort of like I don't know how to it puts you in a grumpy sort of like lethargic like everything takes Mm -hmm. long because it's like steam dude it's horrible and it goes on this is the worst time like these few months now but it goes on all the the whole year except kind of sort of maybe in november and december and january there's slight less aggressive you know temperatures but dude it's 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 a nightmare yeah yeah, I'm sorry for for, for going off. Oh, on no, that. no, I I saw. I think it was on Instagram. It was a picture you were cutting something on the table saw, and you were talking about the heat just being oppressive. Dude, it's like it's like the sweat. It's like ah uh, uh, like you know if you're trying to do like a simple little cut, like, uh, and it's like in your eyes, and it's horrible. Uh, he don't know he he should move to England. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's funny when I uh, when I went over to uh, uh, the states and I was at um, Eloy's. Eloy had the air conditioning on in his house, and you open up the door and walk out into that heat, and it's like someone's hit you around the head of a baseball bat, and it's like whack, the heat just hits uh, you. It's unbelievable, <laughs> but it was nice. So let let me let me ask you this question. So you know what you've done? You know, are you? You, you were taken aback, right, uh, for uh, this explosion because it's really an amazing thing that's that's occurred. You know, the the people uh, responding to to these pieces that you're these tools pieces that you're creating. I mean, what's your? How do you feel? Does it? How do you feel about that? You know, it's 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 very it's very humbling. Um, it's it 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 floors me when I really think about you know the 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 fact that people want something made by me. Um, it's, uh, it, it's, it's, it's allowed me to, to the one thing I've done is, is I've, when I, when I would build the, 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 the planes and squares in the machine shop, I would be there till nine or 10 o'clock at night. And you can only be away from your family for so long. You know, you don't want to isolate them and I don't want to be away from them. So what it's allowed me to do is, is by selling the tools I've invested back into my shop and I've been able to buy 
a, a small metal cutting CNC and a milling machine. Um, I had the metal lathe, but uh, it, it's uh, I'm I'm pretty much able to do about I think about roughly ninety percent of the tool making at home so that's helped a lot i it's it used to be where i'd have to think okay well i'm gonna do x y and z on monday night and then a b and c on tuesday night and then that's it and then i gotta wait until the next time around well now <clears throat> if the kids have something special on a tuesday night i can go do that and then on wednesday night i can go do what i was gonna originally do and there's only uh, a couple things. And so I, I'm in the machine shop, the, the, the machine shop I work at maybe once a month for an evening, which is just, it's, it, it's, it's keeping me from, I don't want to get burnout on this. You know, it's something I want to expand. I don't want it to turn into a full-time thing. Um, I enjoy what I do at work. The, the 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 pay is good um the benefits are good and i enjoy most of the people i work with like anything but uh um i i, I want this to i want it to be my creative outlet i don't want it to just turn into i've got to pump 20 planes out now and then they're sent away and i just forget about them i want to be able to know this went to this guy or this guy sent me a special piece of this wood that he had. Like I'm doing a, a nine squares for this guy and he sent me this chunk of rosewood and it's all going to be groomsman's gifts for, cause he's getting married and he's giving them to all the guys in his wedding party. And that's the stuff that I really, that, that that's fulfilling to me is, is, is the, to see, people using them and, and, and just enjoying it. And it's, I want it to stay a creative outlet. Very awesome, dude. So on the heels of that question, let me ask you, um, so what are Tony's words of wisdom, inspiration um, for people, you know, that, that create, that are creating, or that would want to create what, what would you say, you know, as far as encouragement and, and words of wisdom? Um, just to just, just try stuff. Even if you don't have access to milling machines or anything, there's, there's a guy, uh, Conrad Sauer is his name and he makes, he's one of the top custom plane makers in uh, Canada and in the United States, in North America. And he makes beautiful, beautiful custom. His planes go for anywhere from $1,200 to $3,000. Easy. That's how much his planes sell for. And he does most of his work with like a bandsaw on a file. He does a lot of his, all his metal work where I, I use my skill set with the CNC to me, to me, it's just easier than taking a hacksaw and doing this and doing that. I just know I can program it and execute this. But don't let things limit you. Just try it. The first one's usually always going to be crap, you know, or you're going to have to make something over. But don't be afraid to just try it. You know, it's uh, Mackenzie gets gets mad at me. Isn't the right word, but. I don't lack. I don't lack for motivation. I always want to be down here. This place is very cathartic for me. It's it's healing. I've always been that way since a little kid. Building and tinkering and putting things together is always. So I usually don't have a lack of motivation, but just try things. Try to go out of your element. Uh, look at you know guys like you and JP for videos and. You know, do your research and just try to take in as much as possible. Berkey, that man, I, I wish, that's the one thing I've always struggled with, with myself, is that I don't feel that I'm a, I don't feel I'm a creative person. Like, I make things, but I see guys like Berkey and David Welder and like Rory May and these guys that just create art you know, and their, their thought process and stuff. 
it just it, it humbles me because my mind doesn't work that way. I I in order to have a spark, I I can't create the spark myself. I need someone else to say, you know, if you made a square, that would be neat, <clears throat> or if you made this, that would be neat. Then it's fuel on the fire. I can design from there, but you, you look at these guys that do that stuff and I'm just, you know, it, you're, you're not Michael Jordan, you know, it just, it knocks you down a couple pegs, which I feel is good. You, you, you should stay humble because there's always somebody better than you, but, uh, <clears throat> try to pull as much, um, inspiration from these guys as you can. And I've, I very rarely run across anybody that's not, not, you know, forth giving with just even advice, you know, let alone to not tell you how to do something from A to Z in depth, you know, this is how I do it. You know, try to rely on the the community that you're in as a crutch, especially this maker community, because it's phenomenal. The guys and, and women in here are just phenomenal people. It's so true, dude. Um, and I couldn't agree more with what you said. And okay, so I'll throw this at you just to throw a freaking wrench. And so what if the person just, you know, fails, drops? What do they do now? Hmm. There's an answer to that. Yeah. <laughs> what would be your answer? Um, I don't know. I don't, I guess focus on what you think you know is it is 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 it just <clears throat> i i don't know i would think you just just try again you know because like i said i know with like my scroll saw if if i still have some of the little scroll saw things i did as a kid and in my late teens and i laugh at them but it's a start you know just there has you have to have some resiliency, um, and you have to realize that everything you do is not going to go hundred percent the way you want. You know, there's always going to be, you know, limitations, or it could be your fault. It could be the material's fault. You know, just just try to press on and try to learn from your mistakes. And that's like I said, I have piles of brass that have things wrong with them that can't be squares or you know or, or plain parts and you just have to learn some of them are stupid mistakes to, to be honest with you from rushing but i realized that you know you you scrapped this you know scrapped a hundred dollars in brass because you were rushing to get this thing out the door so try to try to learn from your mistakes and if you do hit a wall again reach out and say, I don't know how to do this. You know, I'm having trouble with this. And I've, like I said, I've very, very, very rarely seen any, like, snarkiness or anything. It's always, oh, I had that happen to me. Try this. You know, that's usually what I've seen. Yeah, I, I agree to that. You don't usually see, you know, unless it's behind the scenes and JP and I are talking, he says, Eloy, why'd you do that with the scroll saw? You know, and <laughs> oh, there's, there's always, there's always busting balls. You know, that, <laughs> that's just that. But, but you know, when someone legitimately asks for, for help, you know. <laughs> Eloy, why are you, why are you turning the, why, why are you grabbing the freaking thing? And why is it like, you know, freaking JP? <laughs> well, if you knew um, you could do it, I wouldn't have to. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, so yeah, dude. Great, great. Uh great advice um so let let me ask you this did you enjoy being here on the show i did i i i, I was i was nervous because i knew you you dig a little you know not like in my past but you would you know the, you're you're a deep dude so i knew that that and i don't have those many conversations so that's why you know like the questions i stumbled on but i i was very much looking forward to it i enjoyed it a lot. Well, dude, I, I look. You know, um, we're honored that that you came on, and and we're all buddies. Yes, we're not face to face, but we're always in the community, com seeing each other's create creations and uh, conversing, and and so it's it's all good. And you know, I I'm lucky to be able to interview and interact with with all of you guys. Um, 
So, I mean, so let me ask you, will you come back? Oh, absolutely. I'll take JP's spot if you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can take my space when uh, next time I have to have a time off. Well, no, that would step on Doc's shoes. I don't want to do that. If Doc's not available. <laughs> so if somebody wanted to order from you, um, number one, how long will, will – it depends. I know it depends on what they order, but where do they go and what – you know, what, what are, they have to be patient, right? Like Maloof, when you would order uh, – I've seen the documentary. I'm sure everybody there has seen it. You order the – and Maloof is, is saying before he passed in this documentary, he says – you know, people call me all the time and I tell them, be patient. It's going to be beautiful. Just, and then like a year passes, be patient. <laughs> so, like, so um, and then when they get it, they're like, oh, it's the most beautiful thing. I had to wait, but the wait was great. Um, so where do they go if they, if they want to? My, my website is hillviewwm.com. Um, that will, that's it's more of a landing spot. You can access my Etsy store, the, my Instagram feed, and there's some examples of planes and and squares that I've done. My if you just go on Etsy.com and uh, just I think if you just search Hillview or Hillview Square, that'll get you access to all the squares. Um, they're 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 available for purchase on Etsy, and that's usually around eight weeks to get a square. Um, if you want to get in line for the plane, the best thing to do is just shoot me an email. There's contact information on that website to, to email me with, uh, and then I, what I'll do is I'll, I'll get you on the list and reach out. Like I said, you put the deposit down that saves your spot that basically pays for materials. I'll reach out. I'll get the particulars from you. What kind of wood you want? I use, I will use any kind of wood basically as long as I can get my hands on it. Or if you have a piece that you want to use, I've had people do that. Um, I've yet knock on wood to run into a chunk of wood that I haven't been able to use. Right. Uh, you know, a lot of guys like uh, Coca Bolo and uh, African Blackwood is another big one. The one thing I've found though is, is uh, there's restrictions for the rosewoods uh coco bolo blackwood and rosewood i cannot send i can't ship internationally because i just don't have the there, there's those woods have become endangered so i can send them through the united states if if anybody orders a coco bolo plane and they're in arizona i can send it to them no problem but like if i were to send a jp there's a chance that we could get in trouble for for sending them overseas. Cause I know a lot of the, I know you're big into music. I know a lot of the guitar companies have had to, to change Gibson. fret boards and stuff because of that. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Well, I'll tell you what, man, Mark from make tinker share. He made out like a bandit. I'm just going to tell you right now. He's got that. So what if a person goes and last thing I'll, I'll, I'll ask, what if a person goes and wishes to get in line and purchase and um but they can they request like hey man i want this dated from when you did it Is yeah that all the the actually i've got it in my hand there's the, the this this is the cap iron that that holds the blade that goes in and it's all it's dated engraved you know the serial number and that's what ties that to the to the plane so that would so when Space Antiques Roadshow ever happens, they can go, oh, you can see here. Here's the maker's mark, you know. And I, I'm Look, dude, I'm telling you, fine. You guys can all you – I'm telling you, this is going to be an incredible thing. You will see. People are going to be – and, like, you know how they get coins and stuff, and they like, don't mess with the patina. It'll have, like, a, a green patina over it and, like, like growth on it and stuff because it's been, like, 5,000 years and stuff. Well, it's funny. I was sketching in my sketchbook at the beach and my stepdaughter, she's very creative and she's also, she's a little mischievous. So she's like, Tony, can I see your book? And she writes up in the corner, Tony is a big butt face. So I said, do you realize in like 200 years when this joking, when the, if this book goes into the Smithsonian Institute Museum, they're going to show, oh, this is where he designed this tool. And then up in the corner, it's going to say Tony is a big butt face. So she thought that was hilarious. So, but. 
All right, dude. Well, we're going to pass it on to you. It's going to be up on the wall right next to the calendar. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, actually, that, that wouldn't affect anything if you're going to have your calendar. It's true. <laughs> KP? Uh, I'm just going to uh, leave everybody with some uh, great words of inspiration that um, I got from Chris Fisher, the blind wood turner. And uh, it's basically four words that just says, not dead, can't quit. I love it. Yeah. Nothing. Awesome, dude. Um, that's actually a perfect way to, to end it. Uh, I do want to mention one last thing before we all go and um, do whatever. Um, on makersmedianetwork.com, there's now a uh, section for T-shirts where all makers are putting their T-shirts in. I don't know if it's, it's um, maker, Makers Media Network makers only we'd have we'd have to go in ch and check but makers meeting I mean, i've got a shirt out now as well what i've got a shirt on there now and i yeah you do yeah and so you can go and shop for all the shirts in one place and it cuts down on i think they were saying it cuts down i mean everybody's on the shipping um well i'm on there uh so is chad from man crafting um i think ox in the shop might be in there I know that um, Doc Jared Hildebrandt is there. Um, boy, who who else? Be Happy is there. Um, Javi's Wood Shop. Daniel Harju is Harju. I think Harju's got the the shirt with the nail as well. Uh, I, I'm not going to mention everybody. You, you can check check it out if you're you're curious to see. But the it's it's a revolutionary thing because as opposed to all the makers get their money because you can find them on their websites, but it's all located in one spot. I'm not sure if, if Steve wanted me to mention this a lot, but I found it such a cool thing that, that I wanted to mention that. Um, guys, have a, a good week, rest of the week, and thank you for hanging out. We'll see you next week, Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern. Have a good night, and thank you for, for everything. Peace. Take it easy, everyone. Thank you.